Hey, welcome aboard. Do one last check to make sure your ejection seat is armed. Today we're on the USS Theodore Roosevelt, CVN-71, on the flight deck getting ready to do a day ULT, or unit level training sortie, somewhere over the Pacific Ocean near Wake Island. The plane captain has released us, our chocks and chains have been removed, and now our director is telling us to pull forward from the finger near L4, which is on the aft port side of the ship. The PC tells us to stop. He gives us that big thumbs down, meaning put your hook down. I drop the hook with my right hand. And we wait now as they go behind the aircraft to make sure that the hook is down, fully extended, and that it looks good. Hook comes back up. Now the director is going to walk back in front of the aircraft. And if everything looked good, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, meaning hook check hand signal, and then an overall thumbs up to tell me that my hook is okay. There it is. Okay, close fist means stay where you're at. As the director walks out in front of the aircraft, looking to his right, trying to figure out where he's going to taxi us. He gives us the brakes release signal with the hand wave telling us to come forward. Coming forward, I'll look to the left to make sure my wingtip clearance is good. Look to my right to make sure it's good as well. And we pull forward. Nice and easy, pulling forward. Left turn, left turn, left turn. Now he's pointing to another director. Let's make that left hand turn. You can see that director now is by the jet blast deflector for catapult three. Tell me to turn. Stop turn. Now come forward, come forward. Coming forward. Coming forward. A little bumpy as we go over the resting gear. Coming forward. And a little tiny bit more. Stop. There we go. So now let's take a minute to look at the JBD or Jet Blast Deflector off the nose. The JBD is pretty neat. It's six individual panels. Each panel's got two hydraulic arms on the back that can raise and lower the panel. All six panels will move in unison. And on the back of the panels, you'll see a network of pipes and then those pipes are uh, for the ship to pump seawater through to cool the whole thing down. You saw me take a quick glance to my left and back to my right and with my right hand I moved the wing fold switch into the spread position so our now wings are slowly spreading their spread by now. We're good to go. The JBD is designed to cool down the exhaust from a Super Hornet which in max grunt right before a catapult launch can get as hot as about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit so it certainly needs seawater to cool that thing down otherwise it's going to be melting tires and shoes if somebody were to taxi or walk across it after a cat shot. So let's take an opportunity to look at that Super Hornet that we can see at our left 10 o'clock. This is kind of a unique angle that we can see what's going on near the nose gear of the airplane. From our perspective in the cockpit you can't see down there exactly what's going on so I'll point out what's going on as they do it for that aircraft. You can see the director's telling the pilot to move the aircraft forward a little bit and the whole back operator, the guy in the green shirt by the nose gear, is walking looking at the whole back fitting that he's about to hook up to the airplane and then to the flight deck. The whole back fitting is a three foot long bar that's going to connect to a cleat behind the shuttle and it's going to connect to the nose gear of the aircraft. Now the whole back fitting literally holds the aircraft back so that when the aircraft goes to mill or max power, the aircraft will not release and start moving unless that power is combined with the power from a catapult shot and the jet will go fly. So now the jet in catapult four is pulled forward. They've gone up to the shuttle. The whole back operator has put the whole back fitting on the nose of the gear. It's connected to the cleat. And in a little while, when they're ready, they're gonna pull that aircraft forward about another foot or so to put the aircraft into tension. When they put it into tension, now the launch bar on the very front of the nose gear is going to go over the shuttle and into the shuttle with the whole back fitting pulling back on the aircraft trying to hold it in place. And that's when the aircraft goes into tension. When we go into tension, we take our feet off the brakes, we put our parking brake in, and the aircraft's just kind of stuck there in tension. And the catapult's now ready to go. You can see the catapult officer taking one last glance at the shuttle and the whole back fitting, making sure it's good to go. 
now everybody's kind of just watching Catapult 3 as that aircraft's getting ready to go. There's my signature move. I hope you enjoyed that. You see the rudder pedals on Catapult 3 moving now, so on the jet on Cat 3 moving. So he's coming up on the power, wiping out the controls. Our jet is moving around tremendously. The, even though the jet blast deflector is in front of us, there's still a lot of hot exhaust coming around that thing. It's moving our jet, as you can hear, super loud. There he goes. He's off the races now. The JBD is going to lower. Everybody scurries to Catapult 3 now as they work on the jet on Cat 4. And now the holdback operator is the guy in the green shirt by the nose landing gear of the airplane. It's going to tell the shooter to have the airplane full forward just a little more so the launch bar can go over the shuttle and into the shuttle. And that hand signal means bring it forward, bring it forward, bring it forward. There he goes. Boom, the launch bar is now in the shuttle. He's in tension. That hand signal means tension. And now he's going to run away from the jet, making sure that he's clear. The shooter or the catapult officer is going to walk up there and give a wipeout signal and the run-up signal, and here he comes. So now they're going to wipe out the controls. This is a mill power catch shot. He's not giving him the pump. Thumbs up, good to go. You'll see the shooter point downrange. And they're off to the races. Now everybody scurries out of the way from Cat 3 to Cat 4, making room for us. Our director slowly telling us to come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward. A little right, a little right. There we go, come forward. Nice and slow, come forward, come forward, forward, come forward. Easy, and a little more, tip. come forward. Slow hand movements mean very slow, stop. That hand signal, launch bar down. With my left hand, my launch bar comes down now. Our launch bar is now in the track to the shuttle, but it's not quite in the shuttle. Now, one thing of note, if you look at our left 10 o'clock, you can see guys in green shirts by the eye flaws or the improved Fresnel lens. Uh, those are actually visual landing aid electricians, and they're de-rigging MOVLAS, M-O-V-L-A-S, which is the manually operated visual landing aid system and rigging up just the normal ball, as we call it, uh, for flight operations. Now, the Melvis is a backup shipboard visual aid landing system that's used when the primary system, which is like the regular ball, um, is inoperative due to like a battle casualty or it's just plain out inoperative, they need to work on it, or when stabilization limits are exceeded. For instance, if the boat's moving around a whole lot, uh, big pitch and decks, or lastly, when the paddles or the pilots just need training, and normally in a day like this, we get one cycle, one recovery cycle a day would be Mobilis just for pilot and LSO proficiency. One thing that's neat about Mobilis is the LSOs can control the flight path that's displayed to the pilot regardless of where the pilot actually is on glide slope. This is especially helpful in situations where there's like a big pitching deck and the pilots need to be synced with the deck that even though the pilot may be below glide slope, they may appear to be above glide slope based on a pitching deck. And the paddles with the joystick and the lights can tell them exactly where they are, or at least where the paddles wants them to go. So it's kind of neat while we're parked here, we can take a minute and look at the actual eye flaws. You can see that it's got the green lights that go across sideways on it, and that's what we call the datum. And we reference the ball, which is the light in the center of it, which you can't quite see here because it's not on yet. The ball in the center of it, um, is called the source. Now if the source is above the datums and you're above glide path and if the source where the ball goes below the datums and you're below glide path and then you're well below glide path you'll see a red ball um, which is uh, really bad news you don't want to see. You can also see above the datum there's a series of green lights and those are called cut lights and the LSO with the stick that they hold can push a button that'll activate cut lights which is like a roger ball indication or in a zip lip operation can mean a little bit of power. And below that are some red lights, which you can use uh, for basically wave off lights. When you get waved off, you just get a big flash of those red lights. Okay, now we're pulling forward. The director on our right side is getting us forward. We're just about to get into tension. And you can see the shooter or the catapult officer at our uh, left 10 o'clock or so communicating with the, uh, the guys working in the bubble down there who are actually operating the catapult. 
Looks like we're gonna pull forward just a little bit more. There it is. Okay, there's tension, feed off the brake, park and brake in. And now we're gonna turn our attention to the shooter who pounds his chest, says me, 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 and she gives us the run up signal. We're running it up, we're wiping it out, going to max power, looking at the flight controls, checking the blends one last time. Everything looks good, quick hand salute, head goes back. And we wait, wait, wait. And there it is. Fly Navy. Well, guys, if you enjoyed the jam today, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Buy me a beer. I'd sure appreciate it. The details are in the description. Welcome aboard Growl Jams.